Okay, so we have blueberries, Ike Station, Duna Ejecta, Duna Station, or the Duna stuff. Hmm. So, but the Duna Station we can't do yet. That's more complicated. So one of these, and then... Oh, this Duna Ejecta is on Ike. Gosh darn it. We're going to have to land a Kerbal on Ike and then on... Duna? I mean, on Duna and then on Ike? Hmm. Maybe we should send two Kerbals. We have Rich Hat, Hangle, Tezzer... I guess we can risk... I'm not going to risk Jeb and Val. <laughs> they've, besides, they've been to, been to Duna. Or at least one... I think both of them? One of them? I forget. Du Val's already a four-star. Jeez. Time flies. Okay, the moon base seem... Wait, um... Yeah, the moon base seems to have all we need for an orbital station on Ike. So we'll send that. Well, except for antenna, we'll have to make sure. So not this one. We need the other antenna. Mass-wise, it should be a one-to-one -one sort of thing. More or less. I'll put ladder. I wanted to put ladder rungs down here. We'll probably eventually land this on Ike, is what I'm thinking. The controller is under there. Uh, we can swap. Oh, this is the hex. Okay, no, so we don't want to swap. We'll also be delivering these little bits of cargo too, so that's pretty good. So this is for Ike, so this will be Ike base now. Basically the same as a Duna base, just a little bit different. Alright. And... Nintendo docking port generates power. That's why we have the docking port on there. Five Kerbals, viewing cupola. Yep. No Jeb. The tube part. Which tube part? I've got... Oh, these structural tubes, you mean? Why? Well, uh... Barring response, I'm gonna proceed. Big relay antenna on one... in one. I mean, but... yeah, I mean, I think we, we're gonna be landing this as a base. We're not gonna use this as a relay, really. Um, we'll... we'll send a separate relay, I think. Yeah, I, I don't think I intend for this to be a uh, satellite. Uh, once we fulfill the orbital station around Ike contract, we'll land it on Ike. I think. Okay, throttle up, SAS on, and uh, let's see where our satellites are at. Mm, let's wait until station one is overhead. And launch. Might have wanted a bit more electric charge. Honestly, I'm not even sure I understand how KSP manages to get Unity to be happy with really large planets. Or planets of any size, to be honest. I mean, it's... Must take some doing. Okay, we're in space. Let's extend all the things. Uh, a bit lopsided, but alright. Okay, let's see about that Duna transfer. Well, it'll take a while to get there, but we can get there. Alright, let's go. Is it just me, or have there not been many rocket launches recently? I mean... Yeah, basically. It's been a bit slow, hasn't it? Or is it just uh, that I wasn't paying attention? So then we'll want to get this over to Ike. Oh, it's gonna take a whole year to get there. 
EST, yeah. So 6.45 my time and... Very early. Okay, there's Ike right there. 916? Well, this can swing that. Yep. We'll see about the landing. That might be tight, but this can handle the rest. Let's make sure it's recharging. Did I not get the other side solar panel out? No, it did. It was just sort of camouflaged. Alright, so it's recharging. Next, we have to launch Kerbals. As dangerous as that is. We are going to use the Flight Proven system that we used before, even though it's probably dodgy and... We definitely have the possibility of making something better. We have a lot of money, but... No harm in being cheap, I suppose. So this actually used thrust in order to slow down, in order to deploy the parachute. We've... well, I guess we might as well do the goo container. Kerbal was able to use the EVA pack on Duna, we'll have the Kerbal EVA on Duna, but then what if we land in the wrong biome? Hmm. Well, shouldn't, but... Blueberries might be hard to find. Maybe we should send something more robust to give the Kerbal more um, leeway. We land with something like this, and we'll probably need more than just one of these. Do I want to risk it having a little bit less? It's also huge. We could have four sparks. That'll be... but then, even if the Terrier has a little bit less ISP, it won't be that much less. Not so that the spark beats it. So it's 2,534 meters per second with four sparks. Oh, well, we should be in vacuum. 3,361, and then four sparks, 3,000. So that's 300 meters per second less. Oh, um, I guess we'll try the Terrier. Let's see what it is with um, Kerbin, not Kerbin, um, Duna, sea level 2816. Well, it's not too bad. Still a good thrust weight ratio and everything. Maybe this time though we should have actual landing legs. I don't know. But then we still have the 30 part count limit. The tool's okay, you know, no, I don't miss, I didn't even use Kerbal Engineer very much, I usually used MechJeb, but yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm good, it's fine. It doesn't show torque, yeah, but again, I didn't use Kerbal Engineer much, so I used to use RCS Build Aid for the torque. Anyway, torque is a minor issue when you've got the powerful reaction wheels they have in stock. Um, in Realism Overhaul it'd be worse, because you don't have the reaction wheels to counteract the torque. Your friend. Thanks for following, Captain Chaos. Does that look stable to you? 0. 0.69. I like this Cheetah, but it might be a little bit low power. Maybe I need two Cheetahs. Hmm. Well, that's uh, thrust weight ratio 1. I guess we should use an engine plate. Even though we've only got this size engine plate. Um, well, no, we've got that one. That seems like the wrong place for that. Um, okay, that goes, that lights, these two. 28. Well, much as I like those engines. There's only one engine that's going to fit down here. If we want to just have all the Delta V in the world, 
But should we have all the Delta V in the world? I don't know. I don't know that we need this much. The problem is we're going to have to dump this stage before landing anyway. Right? This is way more than we need. That actually can't get off the ground very easily. It can get off the ground, but not very easily. But, see, I mean, that's got 3,000 meters per second down there. Then we take about 1,000 out of this to finish orbit, let's say. And then we need another 1,000 or so to get to Duna. I guess that leaves it with a little bit to make orbit. And then this has to do the landing. I guess it'd be about right. That leaves this with a lot of Delta V, but we wanted that to have a lot of Delta V. Looks like a reasonably nice rocket, except for this part right here. I mean, if I was a good Kerbal, maybe I could take those off. Hmm. But then it won't be able to land on the Terrier very well, would it? Nope. So those stay on. This is so. This is this. This isn't much of a Smurf anymore. And boy, do we not have fins. Oh, I forgot the launch clamps. Okay, well, let's take a tank off. And that gives us 30 parts. With launch clamps. This seems like quite a risk. muffin because we're going after blueberries that's what I got we're calling this the muffin and we will send rich hat this may be a horrible idea rich hat Okay, go. At least you don't have to worry about comms. Okay, well, we can coast, obviously. It worked. Pretty good. Nothing to prepare. I, well, I guess we can... Well, we'll wait until we get out of the atmosphere and then extend those. Dual cheetahs. Sort of like a dual engine centaur, almost. Oh, we're still in a position where we would probably be able to keep burning. Oh, go ahead. A little bit later than the other one, but still. Oh, great. Now I want to play Final Fantasy. <laughs> Not the optimal approach, but... It's an approach. Okay, and we'll probably have some correction over here that I'll temporarily make. Well, we need to get to... some biome or another, so... Probably we should make a high pass out of it, and then... We need to capture into orbit first, and then see where we need to land. Ah, okay, that's a bit touchy. Alright, but this will give us an opportunity to pick our landing spot. Ah, that's even better. Okay, so that's what's going to happen to Rich Hat. Let's get Rich Hat into daylight. And make sure everything is good with Rich Hat. This is not good. Okay. Rich Hat is on his way. Back to Space Center. Then we have one more Kerbal to launch to Duna. And that Kerbal will take care of Ike. And we'll just launch the same craft. It's not that expensive considering our budget. I don't see any reason why we should change it for Ike in particular. It will certainly have enough uh, 
press to weight ratio in that stage. So, yep. Unless that's lying to me. Not be lying to me. Okay. I McMuffin. Just to distinguish them. We will send Tezzer. Alright, daylight launch, thrall up, SAS is on, and launch. Oh yeah, to the monolith at the KSC shooter. I don't know if they've changed anything about it since I went there many, many years ago. I have not been there recently, I can tell you. Ooh, getting a little bit hot up there. Ooh. That decoupling doesn't like to happen, that's for sure. Even though it works. They improved the look of the textures close up, but as far as Kerbin is concerned, I would much rather have it look a little bit better from up here. Okay, we are in orbit. And Duna. So this will be quicker, or um, or it will be slower. I thought they were coming in 300 days. This is actually longer. And then there's this other approach in six years. <laughs> I thought. Anyway, whatever. Okay, maybe quicker, maybe slower. I don't know. She'll get there eventually. For those just joining, uh, we're sending two Kerbals over to Duna. Well, one to Duna, one to Ike, and then we also had a orbital station contract for Duna. For Duna, for Tezzer Kerman here, she's going to Ike to pick up um, Ejecta, Duna Ejecta. And then from Duna itself, we've got a Kerbal going there to pick up blueberries. So, yeah. Well, there's an Ike encounter. She's actually trying to get to Ike, but I think it'd still be better to catch around Duna first. Let's not do that sort of shenanigans. Okay, that'll be fine. Alright, so, yeah. <laughs> A U-turn! A Duna U-turn if we really, really wanted it. But, no. Let's get her in daylight. Daylight. 